From the OG MILF to evil stepmom to bend and snap pro to the now legendary Tanya McQuad. If you aren't a fan of Jennifer Coolidge's comedic genius, who do you think you are? Are you lost? No, but honestly, I could sing her praises forever. We could not talk or talk forever and still find things to not talk about. So today I'm going to be taking a page out of some of Jennifer's most iconic roles and building a day of eating inspired by a Golden Globe winning queen. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, I will be eating like award-winning actress Jennifer Coolidge. Well, like not really, which you're about to see, but a reminder that this is just what I eat on a random day and is not meant to be copied or recommended as how you should eat. So always speak to a registered dietitian about your unique needs. Also, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring that bell and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Abby's Kitchen. So according to the Daily Mail, Jennifer Coolidge almost turned down the iconic role of Tanya McQuad because she gained 40 pounds during COVID COVID and thought she was too fat to take the gig. Like so many of us in the early dark days of the pandemic, Jennifer found herself depressed and turning to food to try to cope. Telling news outlets, and I quote, I thought we were all going to die. I really did. So I was eating myself to death, allegedly eating five or six vegan pizzas every day. And Stifler's mom is not alone. Research suggests that over 48% of people experience pandemic related weight gain, AKA the COVID-15, often related to stress, loneliness, anxiety, depression, and financial strain. But aside from this very relatable factoid, there really isn't a whole lot of details about what Jennifer Coolidge eats or her diet it anywhere online. Which is fascinating to me because if you type any other celebrity's name in plus diet on Google, you'll get dozens of pages outlining their so-called plan. And I guess that's to be expected when you're not already a size two or haven't publicly dropped a ton of weight for a role. Hashtag Hollywood problems. But I digress. Despite the disappointing dearth of details out there on Jennifer Coolidge's alleged diet, I actually thought it'd be more fun to piece together some meals from some of Jennifer's most iconic movie roles, but of course make it all vegan because that is like the one detail that I could actually find online about Jennifer Coolidge's actual diet. But my stomach is growling, I am hungry. So Abby, let's get started. <laughs> I am beyond excited about today. I am a huge Jennifer Coolidge fan. I think she's a comedic genius. And I thought I would like channel a little Jennifer vibes. This felt like, this felt a little white lotus maybe. Is there maybe a lotus on this? What is a lotus? I don't know. It's a flower that I am not familiar with. But I've got my obligatory coffee and I am dying of starvation right now. So talk breakfast to me, girl. Are you lost? Stifler's mom, I... Now folks, I could not do a Jennifer Coolidge diet without paying homage to one of the most iconic movie roles of all time, Stifler's mom. That's Stifler's mom? Mill, Mill, Mill. And while I would not snub, like, apple pie straight up for breakfast. I do think we can make it like a little more satiating while still getting that warm apple pie experience. In my mouth, obviously. You should put your mouth on that. How can you even use that one naturally? But even that sounds bad. Let's make breakfast. It is Monday, is it, it's Tuesday? But it's like a holiday Monday situation. So I'm not with it yet. Oatmeal, let's do it, Abby. Oats down. And we're keeping it plant-based for you, Jennifer. So I'm using some pea milk to bump up the protein. Throw that bad boy in. Some healthy fats. Hemp hearts. That's good. And we need a lid. Okay. Ooh, salt. You cannot make oats without salt. Stick that down there. And for the apple pie experience, I'm just going to kind of caramelize some chopped apples, a little avocado oil, throw that down. We're gonna need some cinnamon up in here. Okay, cinnamon. That's a lot. 
Got some brown sugar, which I love to use the demerara sugar. It just like adds this like crunch factor. All right, let's let that soften. I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla. Might need more milk. And I'm gonna add some vanilla protein powder. Plant-based, of course. And you smell. What the rock? <laughs> Smells good. I like a little salt with anything sweet. So it's a little fancy <laughs> salt. Pecans. Ugh, I can ever figure out how to open the bag. Might as well toast these up a little bit because that's going to be our topper. Oh. Run away. All right, let's plate her up. Okay, folks, this smells amazing, but I also just realized I have a pie crust candle. Pretty sure it's vegan. Pretty sure the candle's vegan. We're not gonna eat it, but we're gonna smell it for the full experience. It smells like Stifler's mom, you know? Or what I would imagine she smelled like. Delicious. Mm. Mm. Do you guys remember the apples and spice Quaker oatmeal packets that you used to eat as a kid? It's better. And I'm not gonna say it's as good as third base when you're a virgin, but I'm a mama too, and sometimes just eating my breakfast alone in quiet is better than sex. Sorry, not sorry. Mm. It is lunchtime, and I got two early 2000s bangers for you. A Cinderella story and Legally Blonde. Leave me in the comments below which was your fave. Oh my God, you look like the 4th of July. That makes me want a hot dog real bad. Is this the Norwegian salmon that I asked for? Because I need my omega-3s. Only the best. So I'm actually really excited about this. I mean, as you guys know, I'm not plant-based myself. So if someone offers me a hot dog at like a barbecue and that's all there is, I'm not gonna say no. But when I have the choice, I actually prefer the taste of these bad boys. Not to mention, I know this is like super weird to say, but the hot dog water, like it smells like real hot dog water. Like, I don't know how they manufacture that or what, like in what lab were they trying to perfect hot dog water? I don't know, but I'm glad that they did. Like smell this. You weird, buddy, you're weird. Taste aside, smell aside, I actually have some pretty decent stats. Abby, can you compare for us? You got it. So first of all, I'm not into food fear mongering because the 4th of July vibes also makes me want an OG hot dog real bad. But if we're comparing plant-based to classic ballpark, there are some nutritional distinctions. So for one, we do have a solid amount of evidence that highly processed meat products like hot dogs have been associated with cancer, cardiovascular disease, and all-cause mortality. Veggie dogs are not necessarily a super health food either, as they are still considered highly processed and high in salt. But compared to the OG, they are typically lower in fat and higher in protein, plus are generally nitrate free. Veggie dogs also have a surprisingly solid amount of iron and B vitamins for convenience food. So yeah, I'm not mad. We're going plant-based with Jennifer today. These weans are small, so I'm gonna do like two in a bun. Can I? I'm gonna do two. Mm. We've even got the authentic hot dog sweat. Look at that. They mastered it. F geniuses. All right, love this journey for us, but I'm gonna get some veg in there. And that bougie sounding smoked salmon salad from Norwegia, I'm here for it. And I wouldn't even be surprised if like the salmon diet was a legit thing back in the 2000s. Those were dark days. But obviously we're going plant-based today and I managed to find this plant-based smoked salmon. It's made out of carrots with some sugar and apple cider vinegar and some oil and seaweed and some flax oil. So as they tell us here, it's a source of omega-3 polyunsaturates. It was expensive, I'm not gonna lie. So it better be damn good. And the downside is we're really not gonna be getting a ton of omega-3s that we would be getting in real salmon. So to compensate, I'm gonna add Lots of hemp hearts on top. 
just load her up. Not the equivalent, but still a nutritious addition. Abby, can you walk us through the difference between plant-based and marine-based omega-3s? So most of the major benefits that we hear associated with omega-3s like brain health, heart health, and mental health are largely linked to EPA and DHA omega-3s. Now the best sources of EPA and DHA are in fatty fish. Now, plant-based omega-3s come in the form of ALA, which is an essential precursor to EPA and DHA. The problem is the conversion factor in humans is really inefficient. Only one to 10% of ALA gets converted to EPA and only 0.5 to 5% into DHA. So of course, every bit in the diet helps, but if you are fully plant-based, it may be worth taking an algae-based omega-3 supplement to ensure you're meeting your needs. Love me a little everything bagel seasoning because it just like you get that full schmear experience. A little Italian dressing, which is already plant based. And I'm a ketchup and mustard galley. Whoop. Excuse me. Ugh. Guys, this is my jam. We got tons of beautiful colors here. We've got lots of protein in our hot dogs, healthy fats in the avocado and the hemp seeds, and of course, tons of high fiber carbs. I mean, can you believe this little veggie dog has eight grams of protein? I'm not mad about this meal. I'm really not. I am definitely curious about the smoked salmon experience. So let's give that a go first. Yeah, it could pass. It could pass if you're not Jewish. Um, and this is the hot dog. Mm. Mm. Yep. The pickles. Mm -hmm. They snap. <laughs> I'm extremely confused. This guy's is totally Paulette approved. Cause as Paulette would say herself, I'm taking the dog, dumbass. And snap. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's talk dinner because I'm very excited about this. Also, if you have not watched The White Lotus yet, you are hugely missing out. Also massive spoiler alert here, but what is the point of a third season without Tanya McQuad? Just tell me, am I right? <gasps> a real tragedy for our times, honestly. Alas, to pay homage to season two's dreamy South Italian backdrop, of course, you know, we've got to do the nudes. It's nudie magazine day. Oh, get your head out of there. You know what I mean. We're gonna do a super simple pasta alla norma, which is a classic Sicilian dish made with tomatoes, uh, garlic, and eggplant. Of course, I could make the sauce myself, but why spend the time when Ely does a perfectly good job at it? So I'm taking a shortcut because hashtag motherhood. And I have a feeling that Tanya McQuad never cooked a meal in her life, just saying. But while I wait for the water to boil back there, I poured myself a little glass of the good stuff. Abby, could you give us a little rundown on the benefits or risks of red wine? As per usual, it's complicated, especially in light of new guidelines here in Canada that reduce the maximum recommended weekly drinks from up to 15 down to just two. That's quite the jump, but it is based on emerging research that suggests anything beyond two drinks a week puts you at elevated risk of chronic diseases like cancers, diabetes, heart disease, liver disease, and more. Now on the flip side, we also have evidence suggesting that the antioxidant resveratrol in red wine may actually reduce the risk of certain cancers. It may also help to boost cognitive function, support heart health, and regulate blood sugar. So to drink or not to drink? That is the question. And this is a great example of the adage, the dose makes the poison. What we generally see in the literature when it comes to alcohol is what we call a J-shaped curve, where a small amount of alcohol may have a protective effect, but anything more, and we see a huge uptick in risk. Risk is also likely extremely individualized. So bottom line, 
I would not aim to get your antioxidants from wine, but if you do choose to imbibe, do so in moderation. Noted. I am too old for hangovers anyway, so fair enough. Anyways, let's cook some pasta. You guys know I don't do the low carb thing, but one thing I love to do when I'm making pasta is to mix my real nudes with some zucchini noodles, just so we can get a little extra veg in there and some extra fiber. If you wanna make zucchini noodles that don't suck, here's a little tip. Salt them really good. And this is gonna help to draw out some of the moisture so that all that water doesn't end up in your sauce. So I let that sit for about 10 minutes and now I'm just gonna pat it all dry. This is a bucatini, my favorite nude. It's got a little hole in the middle. It does. You know that humans have seven holes? Ears, two, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Just wondering that you actually counted all of them. Do women have more? Or is it all the same I mean, hole? What? Technically. No, it's the same hole. Well, I guess like... What? I mean, technically you have eight, actually. Yeah, like for peeing. Oh. Yeah, it's different. Slightly, I think. I love this combo. Yeah. <laughs> it is more difficult to open this jar a sauce than it is to make it. Noted for next time. Okay, I'm just trying to avoid a dry cleaning bill, if you don't mind. Let's get all our bad boys in here. Okay, zucchini. Ah! Hello. A lot of chunky sauce. Throw in some nooch for that cheesy flavor. And a couple of olives. Woo! Oppa! The wrong culture. What do the Italians say? Oh, forgot this ingredient. White beans. Protein. There we go, folks. Woo! It's a party! Guys, this took me five minutes and I'm not mad about it. We've got protein in our white beans and the nooch. We got healthy fats in the olive oil and the olives here and tons of fiber in our veg, pasta, and the sauce. Not to mention, it looks incredible. damn good. It's finally my favorite part of the day, dessert time. Brought to us by one of my favorite Coolidge lines of all time. You want a cookie? Mmm, <laughs> so moist. I don't know why, but maybe it's because moist is one of like the most cringy words in the dictionary. When you add in like a Jenniferism, it just becomes totally unhinged. That said, I love me a good moist chocolate chip cookie. Did that make you mad? It's just so funny. <laughs> Did that make you mad? Did it offend you? Tell me in the comments below. Do you want me to bleep out moist every time I say it? Punch in. Moist. Moist. <laughs> moist. Oh. Anyway, I'm not a baker. I just don't have the patience, but I will take any opportunity to get me some store-bought cookie dough. And this one's completely plant-based and gluten-free and peanut and nut-free. So let's bake this off, bitches. 15 minutes later. For gluten-free and vegan, they look pretty good. So, and they smell delicious. Will they be moist is another question. And I'm prepared to answer it. But first, I wanna show you a little intuitive eating hack that will completely change your perspective and your relationship with your fear foods like cookies. If your goal is to put your fear foods on the same playing field as all other foods, you need to literally 
put them on the same plate. So I want you to take the food that you deem as like junk or bad or unhealthy and literally put it on the same plate as other foods that provide more nourishment. Visually seeing the healthy and unhealthy foods on the same plate puts them on the same playing field. It rips them off of their pedestal. It makes them all just another food that can be enjoyed in moderation. So you don't have to have a full out cookie binge or a super strict clean eating day. So try this little exercise out yourself and let me know how it goes. For my little dessert snack pack, I've got the moist chocolate chip cookie. I've got some fruit here for some fiber. I've got some crispy chickpeas for some fiber and protein and some pistachios for some healthy fats and a little bit of protein and fiber. I'm going in for the cookie first. Mmm, crispy on the outside and moist on the inside. She's a winner. Oh, oh, oh. Five second roll. So this was low-key such a fun day of eats. I got cookies, I got a hot dog, I got apple pie, I got pasta and wine. Jennifer Coolidge knows how to live. Not to mention, I will take any reason to rewatch her greatest hits. And I really hope that Jennifer's COVID-15, or I guess like COVID-40 story, serves as a good reminder why you should never let your weight stand in your way of opportunities that light you up. And while it sounds like Jennifer was in a rough place during COVID and the events that led up to her weight gain during those years were really challenging for her. In the end, those extra vegan pizzas did not hurt her career. If anything, she's thriving. RIP Tanya, you will be forever missed. And on that note, I hope you guys liked this style of video. If you did, leave me a comment below on different actors or movies or themes or genres or decades that you guys want me to explore in a what in a day. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.